this thing out. You know, a few months back, me and Molly bought a house together. And then, not long after that, we opened up a savings account. But I knew things were really ramping up when she invited me to join her phone plan. And that's how this happened. It's a, it's a new iPhone 11. It's nice. Okay, so let's unbox this bad boy. Now, first of all, this is Molly's box right here. She, of course, had to get the, the big boy, the Max. I got the Pro. Um, I'm going to be using this definitely for the channel. Right now, I'm recording on my old phone. It's, uh, it's still kicking, but it's starting to fall apart, and I thought it was about time. After I hopped on the new phone plan to, uh, of course, capitalize on their buy one get one deal that they like to ease the entry into the phone plans with. But, <laughs> well, then that guy got a pretty good commission out of us if, uh, if they do earn commission over at Verizon. But it's been a while since I've been on iPhone. My last was an iPhone 4 which uh, I think I still have floating around somewhere I should have probably brought that out but um, anyways you can get an idea I'm trying to get the light different here we go that's a little better kind of get an idea of the the difference this is a little bit smaller up here I think, yeah, it's just a, a hair wider as well. Not much of a difference, but um, it's mainly the length, I think. That's the big difference. But you, when you hold it, it's definitely the screen is way larger. For me, it was just something functional. Uh, for Molly, obviously, she's more prone to be looking at her screen for... Uh, with images and so the, the um, <laughs> Molly Molly ripped hers right out of the box as soon as she got it well we kind of both did but uh, she did it so quickly she didn't even bother taking the wrapper off so I brought hers just to give you an idea of the aesthetic that's so important to Apple in the unboxing process it's it's a whole experience it really is so I, I always enjoy it yeah, I'm doing that and it's sealed along the lines here which of course is already open a little bit so it just peels right off and this is the back of the box so she got the 64 gig iPhone 11 Max iPhone 11 Pro Max it comes with ear pods not air pods with lightning connector and uh, New USB-C lightning cable, it's a new charging cable, you'll see, and a little power adapter, and that's it. Of course, they don't give you um, a dongle, a connector, to connect the old ports, these ports, so no more, no more of that. I think they, I don't know if they discarded that in the iPhone 8, but they definitely did with the, with the 10. Anyways, this whole thing comes off. Just slides right off. Unveiling a pristine black box. Usually it's, um, usually they're white, so it is different seeing it be black, but she got the green one, and I got the space gray color. 
you can tell the difference. I like them both. They're both pretty cool colors. I went with the Big Daddy. I didn't care about size so much as capacity. I need that storage for all the stupid little videos I record. And uh, yeah, they both came with the same, same accessories. Of course, the opening. They make it so the box is, uh, it's not too tight where you can't pull it out, but I mean, they definitely engineered it to have a tactile, tactile feel. Like there's a little bit of air resistance. There's the suction. So if you pull it out too quick, you feel the resistance. If you push it in too quick, you can feel the air coming out along the seams. And of course, the matte finish on the box itself is really pretty nice. But uh, hers is empty, of course. <laughs> she got right into it. So let's unbox ours okay and the material of the box is pretty cool it's like it's just you know it's a testament to the quality of the product I really agree with the Steve Jobs aesthetic that or, or ethos maybe that uh you know the aesthetic matters it really does there's no sense in packaging a quality product in a in a shitty box in poor quality materials it's like sturdy cardboard you almost don't want to throw these away it's like you almost if you're uh have slight hoarding tendencies like me you want to just keep it to like put stuff in but um uh, iPhone, nice and shiny, of course. Gleans off the light. And a pretty seamless picture of what the actual phone looks like. This bad boy's in space gray. It's got the three cameras up here. And I'll show you one of the features, one of the cooler features of the camera is this, uh, it's like half zoom where it, it kind of zooms out, almost like a fisheye lens show you how it's packed in the box it's pretty pretty seamless there okay so yeah, you can see it's pretty pretty flat and then they just have this the outer casing just popping up which is why they indented that there but um, you know I actually wondered if Steve Jobs if old Steve would have approved that See my hands are a little bit making some sweat marks there in the back. So let me put the white background there, I guess, so you can see it better. I I was just really surprised that they weren't able to have the camera be flush. But I mean, you know, they obviously engineered it so that it's a nice um it doesn't really distract you, you know, it's not a distracting protrusion, you know, off the phone, because overall, relative to the, to the whole phone itself, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really not jutting out exceptionally. All right, so let me show you the lenses here. The um, casing is this little clear coat casing that it's in. I mean, you know, for what it is, for looking like it's uh, kind of out of place on the phone itself, I know they moved the Apple logo, it used to be up here, they moved it down to, uh, again, it's all aesthetic, of course, to center it, to offset the, uh, the weight, the visual weight, I guess, these lenses might have. Um, as far as the protrusions, you know, they... They definitely did a good job of concealing the protrusion. I mean, let me lock onto this real quick. 
There we go. You know, the lenses themselves, I'm sure the lenses would look like they were sticking out quite a bit, but they, of course, were able to, to uh, design it nicely and make it look like a, a nice curved, little curved transition right there into the height of the lenses. So overall, it's, um, it's a nice, nice looking phone, I gotta admit. I like it. I definitely um, like the space gray. I do like the centered Apple logo. I like the rounded edges. You know, I'm using my Galaxy S7 right now, so can't show you, but um, the edges definitely have like a, there's a sharp edge on top, and they did a good job with the iPhone. And, you know, I know they made this design years ago, but um, I used to think it looked kind of, kind of weird, but the actual perfect curvature of the edges. Speaking of the, the curvature, two things I wanted to point out. It's interesting that, you know, without a case, obviously, they're assuming most people are going to buy cases. You, at least me, um, and especially if I got sweaty fingers, it's actually hard when it's on a flush surface. You can't really tell to, um, to get my fingers underneath it. It kind of slips out. I got to really grab it, really make sure. Um, when it's on a flat table, no, that's a minor, minor annoyance, but, um, you know, for the purpose of really trying to critique and poke every hole in this, I'll, uh, I'll point out all the minor things as well. But, um, yeah, for the most part, you know, too long, didn't watch, even though you're probably like 30 minutes into this already, is that I love, I love it. It's, even the smallest things, you know, are designed for hassle-free user interface. And the usability of this phone is second to none, really. It's pretty fast to get the hang of. Everything's very simplified. It's a easy on the eyes, you know, the layout as well. Well, I don't know what that was. Wow, look at that. So I've never actually... That's the face recognition thing. Look at that. That's so crazy. It's So, yeah, that's the facial recognition, I guess, infrared sh shooting out to detect my face when I hit that. I I can't visibly see that with your eyes, so that's uh that's interesting. That's definitely unexpected. Very cool. Before we actually unlock it with my face and get into it, I want to just show you the the one thing I don't think Steve Jobs would actually have signed off on personally, after reading the biography and learning a little bit about him and you know his track record of um, perfection and yeah I guess you can see it so it's gonna be hard to uh, put the camera there but so when it's on a flat surface the lenses make it off balance and I really doubt you know most people are gonna put it in a case and that um, that little nitpick will be obsolete after that because it the case is gonna even it out, flatten out the uh, the bottom. But the fact that when you don't have a case and you pull it right out and you set it down on a counter, it wobbles when you go to click the top left edge, which is I'm sure by design because there is no feature. Um, the one feature they have gesture wise that would be somewhere up on top it's on the top right so i'm sure there's a reason you know they offset it over here and made the um hand feature to adjust the uh, all these settings on the right so you know they did the best with what they were trying to achieve with the camera 
as far as engineered um, you know looks and really just again aesthetic I mean nobody's really gonna pay attention to that it looks relative to the whole uh, depth of the phone those lenses on the back really aren't that much but it's definitely not a perfect design is I guess what I would get get at so all right let's unlock it let's watch those beams shoot out at my face one more time and maybe cuz I got the light here I'm kinda like hiding behind my phone here let me see if I can do it one more time and not show you guys my passcode Okay, so we're going to try it now, and there we go, alright, so now once I've unlocked it by showing the government, I mean uh, Apple my face, we are in, we are in, and here's my, let me make my screen nice and bright, um, I got my sweet little background I had to customize to make it look cool, um, this is the home screen. Left is like a, uh, just a quick access to some vital functions, tools you might use. We have <laughs> me, little reminders to uh, fix all the screens that Ernie and Gracie ran, plowed through on my back porch so that they don't track dirt in and out. Put out Christmas lights, which I'm a little late. I really need to get to that. And, uh, Man, it's really interesting seeing how often that little sensor is firing off. Uh, calendar, screen time. I kind of like this. Entertainment. Let's see, weather, location. No. You know what? I did make that quip about the government seeing my face. But the little bit of research I've done on security between amongst phones, even though no cell phone really is that secure, is that Apple is um, one of the most one of your best bets if you are looking for security as a, um, a selling point for you in a phone so I, I shouldn't harass them too much about that but we're gonna say no and I like that feature in that they um, when I initially booted this up and I was setting up my phone every app that I went into um, and especially third-party apps they all asked, they all asked, um, or the Apple software, the interface asked whether I wanted to allow security access now, temporarily, or not at all, or indefinitely. So, um, you know, the, I was nervous using, switching from my Android with all the customizations you can do with it, all the, you know, the plethora of third-party apps that you normally have versus uh, iOS. But, I mean, so far, really, all the main apps that I use are all going to be right here. Okay, so up here I got my, um, yeah, I got my little things in nice little boxes. I guess before I show you that, um, yeah, what was I getting at? Security of the apps, I like that. And this little tool thing, I guess, when you swipe left on the screen. So, oh yeah, I was just going to um, acknowledge the fact that entertainment, so you guys don't think I'm uh, that lazy, even though I definitely am, is all YouTube. And so I fall asleep, obviously, like most of you guys, watching stuff on YouTube all the time, so... It uh, it just logs that, but it's it's useful to kind of know, just for my own purposes. You know what type of um, activities I've been doing. A lot of Reddit, YouTube, Sports Tracker. Six two minutes. Yeah, I got on Reddit for a little bit last night, and then YouTube falling asleep. I guess, I guess autoplay eventually stopped. But yeah, this is, um, oh, I guess, hold on. One thing I don't like that the Galaxy did write that the iPhone is taking some getting used to is 
there's no back button and oftentimes if I want to go back I have to really crane because this phone is it's pretty long it's about I'd say it's about half an inch longer than the phone I'm recording with right here the S7 I don't know what the S8s and S9s and 10s are doing or what, what they look like but um let's see but um it's a small qualm I guess let's see what else we got so I just gotta get used to uh going back mail batteries weather I am not in Santa Clara I guess I, guess I gotta reset that for myself um so to counteract the non not having a back button um what it does have is let me go into youtube watching where you can always swipe up and let's see if i just swipe up it doesn't do anything but if i swipe up and hold for a second yeah for me this is all new so i don't really know how to distinguish between new and old features but it's really convenient yeah so if i am um, you know, in settings, whatever, today, if I want to go back, I guess I can just either swipe left, because some apps won't really work all that way, because this is a native iPhone app right there, so YouTube, it doesn't swipe left, that's one of the, whereas, you know, one of the faults I guess I would have with it. On my Android, I'd just be able to hit a back button right there, and it would exit out of that. I think I got the phone on airplane mode right now. I th or no, I guess I don't. I don't know why it's saying I'm offline. Overall, I like it. I like being able to access my apps like that and just swipe them away. That's. I think that's an old feature. Let's see, I'm trying to think. I guess the camera is really... You know, I can use it there and switch back and forth between photo portrait it's pretty nice um, sorry I got all this junk right there I was, try, I was trying to avoid you guys seeing that but oh well um, yeah another thing I guess seeing as it just made that really loud shutter sound is Again, this is an old feature of the iPhone, but um, but I really, really do enjoy the hard button, and it makes a little vibration as well. There's a lot of gestural um, vibration notifications on this phone, like when you max out the volume, it gives you a little, you know, um, it's not a vibration if it's just one pulse, I guess it's a pulse, you might say, you feel. Um, I love it when you're typing. Make sure it looks at my face. It's got it. Um, yeah, you know, when I'm typing. Uh, I guess it's not doing anything there. Let's see. <laughs> this is, uh, this unboxing is turning into kind of a chaotic review. I really wasn't, I'm kind of just like trying to figure out what I enjoy and, and don't enjoy about it as I go. I really, I've only had it for like two days, so I wanted to hurry up and make the review before I, I used the phone too much so I can give you guys a more of first impressions, less a biased interpretation because I'm fresh off my Android life. I broke ties with Android now. The UI and the usability, I guess, the user-friendliness of it all is, um, of course, what Apple's known for. And they didn't disappoint with this edition right here. So the, I think the camera was the last thing I wanted to really show you guys. Um, oh yeah, look at this. Like, this right here... I hadn't doctored this up at all. This is actually a picture. Again, let me try to... So it's not the, the clearest picture in the world. But it's outside my house, and 
that's the actual sky. The stars, the white points of light are stars that you can see right there. So to me, uh, it has a night mode. And I knew I know the Google Pixel has a night mode, and I think Samsung's probably going to try to compete with that as well now. But yeah, it's not going to be anything that I get framed or uh, hang in a portrait or anything like that. But I think it's pretty damn cool to be able to, you know, I take take shots in the dark. Really, is what I'm getting at. But I don't know if it has anything to do with the three cameras. I know that helps with the depth perception with the portrait mode and all that. But the fact that yeah, I can be in really low light conditions, and I guess I'll show you guys. Um, another feature I like is using the camera just by a simple press and hold that's a pretty cool feature you can do the same with the light if I just tap it once it doesn't work but if I do it it uh, it does if I, if I do it it does if, it, if I tap it and hold for like a second it uh, it works so anyways I'll turn that off There we go, okay. You gotta do the same gesture, I guess, for turning it on and off. And, um, yeah, let's turn it back on. I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, other than, let's see, I got my apps, take you on a quick tour through my homepage. Um, before we leave the camera, I guess, I wanted to show you the, so it's got portrait, panorama, that's always cool. I think the coolest thing that I've enjoyed so far, um, just because it's new, you know, we got slow-mo and time-lapse, of course, is the, right here you can see the 0.5 mode. So this is regular, this is zoomed in, and before you get to the 0.5, I guess the two times zoom on these phones are actually um, analog zooms. They're not digital. So the actual lens themselves, I wonder if we can see them move. I don't know. I'm going back and forth, so maybe you guys can see that. I don't know. I can't see. I'll have to look later on the camera while I'm editing. Maybe I'll see it. I don't know. Put something, some text. If it does. Uh, this 0.5 mode is the coolest for me. It's the coolest feature. It essentially mimics, it's like a fisheye, but it essentially mimics, um, from what I can tell, the human, you know, perception, our peripherals over here so like in regular mode my hands like right in front of the camera if I do it like that I guess that'd be a good way to see and then as soon as I put it in the 0.5 mode it completely zooms out even though my hands like right here um, so yeah it has a little convex lens to it and that allows you to capture a lot more data in the lens than you previously were able to so for me, um, you know, especially when I film random things from tight quarters around my house, if I'm doing something in the kitchen or something like that, this is a pretty cool feature. It's pretty versatile. So yeah, at any time from the home screen, just swipe up a whole little bit. You got access to all your open apps. And then, yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Here's all my videos. So my, I've been trying to get in shape even though man the holidays have been really hard on my waistline so that's I try to use that at least uh, weather occasionally a couple times a year I try to go surf and Aiden if you're watching this buddy I got you uh, I got the history of surf in the works in the pipeline so to speak so don't think I forgot about you um 
yeah, some other things. Now, the whole GPS tracker thing, Molly got me on that. Now, she's been wanting to get me to share my location, so she knows that I'm safe and sound when I'm at the library. But uh, I think I do like it, especially if I had kids. And when she goes out for drinks or something like that, and, you know, she doesn't have service, at least I I know where she was at last. Um last time she had service I mean so it's uh, it's you know it's a useful safety feature but it's definitely like all creeping the creeping um, intrusion of technology into our lives it's the GPS locating and Molly always knowing where my phone is it took a little bit of uh, it took a couple years for her to work that on me but it's useful it's useful I do like it. That's the YouTube Studio app and a couple things. I generally use Canva, um, but I also had a, two or three other uh, Android apps that I used, so I'm going to have to try some iOS thumbnail maker apps out. Um, this is all my finance stuff. Got to check the Bitcoin. Mm, no notifications. See how that's doing. Seven thousand. It's holding steady. Holding steady. So and then close it and we'll do that. Ally Bank, yeah. I don't know if you guys heard about them. They got pretty good interest rates, uh, just under two percent for any amount in your savings account, so I was a fan of that, trying to save up a little bit. And this is just podcasts, Audible, and Spotify. And this is my I'm Being Lazy. I just put Uber there because it's a just a place to put it. But I guess if I was using Uber to uh, order food, that would also constitute being lazy as well. <laughs> and uh, But definitely with Instagram and Reddit, I feel like I'm doing nothing productive whatsoever when I use those. Well, oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to actually make a fool of myself and put the screen protector on while I got you guys here. And I also got a, um, a case to unbox and put on. Because we need that for sure. So, yeah, I've been uh, taking a pretty big risk walking around with this thing for a few days without any protection. I just had to pause and like reflect on how many things, how many little clips people could take out of context in this video. Talking about boxes and size and length and protection and swipes and gestures and. Oh my. Anyways, let's. Uh, let's pop. Put this screen protector on and oh yeah I want to record this maybe I won't record it today but I want to do it before Christmas comes up I thought this was kind of cool um, at least a cool approach to trying to figure out the you know the history behind the myths of Santa Claus even though I already did a, a formal, like, um, a little, you know, essay last year about it. You guys can check out it if you want, about the, the history behind the traditions, Santa Claus himself, and all the, uh, at least the American cultural traditions of Christmas. But this book has a little bit more than I was able to find out when I did my little bit of research last year. And it's got some really cool pictures. And it's in the story uh, format. So it's like kind of for children, but definitely not for very young kids. Alright, so... Let me get my case out. All right, so we gotta protect this thing. 
So I hope it protects us if the government comes from my data. First things first, um, I guess before the case, I should probably put the screen protector on. But I'm going to show you guys the case nonetheless. And this uh, it's just a little Amazon buy. I think it was like around $15 I found. And it looks pretty nice so far. Electronic Silk Road, Shenzhen. That's so true. Shenzhen, China is such a huge mecca of electronics and accessories. I might do a whole video on that because that's, that intrigues me. It titillates me. Um, yeah, this uh, really stood out for me. I like the clear case because, you know, brand new fancy phone's got the space gray color on the back. I want to show off to everybody. Let them know how in debt I am. <laughs> and, uh, this little bar here is meant to be like a kickstand so I can set the phone up like that. Or it actually works like this. So let's find out real quick if it does actually work. I got the wrong side. I had the wrong side. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Got some uh, in depth literature on it. Yeah, look at that. So. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. If you're using the stand shown above, please do not press down on the phone. Yeah, I like it. Okay, there's a little QR code. Free marketing, if any of you want this. Maybe I'll put a link in the description, if I actually like it. So here we are. And this little buckle thing looks pretty cool. Stick your finger under there, pulls right up. It's got a notch right there so that it stays secure when you close it. I think. I hope. Uh oh, looks like it almost popped out. <laughs> well, that's not very good advertising. Um, yeah, if I'm being honest with you guys, actually, I've been using it for like, a, yeah, I got it yesterday, so I've been using it for like 12 hours maybe, and I was, there we go, I got it, it just popped out of the silicone case, and it was working fine, I think I just, it was actually pretty hard to take the phone out of the case and put it back in there for the current unboxing. Um, so yeah, I think it just slipped out of its holes. Um, let's see. Man, I hope I didn't screw myself up doing that, though. So. Oh, there we go. So I got a it looked like that little piece just popped out. So I'm going to push it back in. And there we go. Now it's back in. And. Now we can open it up. This side, I think. There we go. And yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. Or, and this is, you know, a soft surface. Um. Get Santa and a shroom salesman to help. Yeah, it can stand up uh, in portrait or vertically as well. So it's pretty cool. Alright, let's.
let's put the screen protector on and we'll pop the case on and I'll be good to go. Head up to the library and edit this bad boy and hopefully have it out before Christmas. Alright, so I guess I'll just open this. Yeah, limited lifetime warranty. For as long as you own your device. Very cool. Packaged, pressed nicely between two hard pieces of plastic. Plastic molds, I guess. Comes right off. Okay. Oh, that's a nice little case sound right there. It's a nice, very thin plastic very thin, opaque plastic bag that it's in. Peel this layer first. Avoid touching adhesive. Okay. So let's quick start guide. We are fans of being quick. Clean it. Place the easy apply tray on your phone. Oh, there's a tray. Peel in place and apply. Press down on the center of the glass to start the adhesion process. And smooth out. Use your thumbs to smooth out any remaining bubbles. And use either the tabs on your invisible shield to slowly lift it away to protect the layer. Then remove the easy apply tray from your phone. Okay. Okay, so we are going to clean it. And then we're going to apply the tray and pop the uh, peel in place. Peel in place the Invisi Shield. So this little pad here feels actually kind of nice. It's a nice little friction pad to, uh, if this were a hard counter, to rest my phone on. I'll place it right there. Alright, so let's clean this sucker off. pretty it's pretty clean okay in case I had some dust and you know harder uh, things to get off I could use that but I don't so I won't also a little alcohol pad I don't think we need that hopefully we don't we did, you guys will learn from my mistake. Okay. Okay, so this is step three. Step two before we do that is step two is yeah, look at that. This phone is smudge and particle free right now. Okay. So we're going to 
pop this on the front. Making sure to firmly press down on all four corners. And just like they say, make sure we're doing it right. And I got video evidence. Okay. Alright, cool. I think that's it. Moment of truth. Okay. What does it say? Okay, peel this layer first, avoid touching adhesive. Alright. Okay. Went the wrong way, want to match the bezels up. Okay. Man. This is kind of intense. I guess I just drop it right, kind of drop it right on, huh? I think I'll try to work it up from the bottom. That was a coincidence. That was not my mom asking me if I need help with this. But I almost do. Okay, here we go. I think we got it. Okay. Okay, all right, that's not bad. Let's see if it works, and it does. All right, guys, that was, I would call that a success. We're gonna stick to that. You know, my parents are getting kind of busy out there. Um, I live by a bridge, so luckily I'm very privileged to be able to come over to their house. They haven't have access to a really quiet house. So any of you ASM artists out there who do not have that, my heart goes out to you. Either that or I might just start doing it at like five in the morning. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, so let's go ahead and pop on our case and call it a day. So uh, Ooh. This thing's caught on the edge there. Uh. 
There we go. Okay. And there we go. All right, cool. That worked out pretty nice. I might have to save this for an ASMR sounds video. That'd be nice. It makes really nice sounds. I like that. Okay. Let's pop on our case. Good. It's a problem with having new phones. You just kind of gotta dive into using them. They look so good that you don't wanna don't wanna mess them up. But all right, here we go. Alright guys, this is uh, how the case works. <laughs> well, if it's on something like that, if it's on a flat surface, it actually works pretty well. It's pretty cool. So you guys can see what it's about. It seems like it would be kind of unstable but it actually works pretty well. It gets by. Somehow manages. Like a soul. And yeah, you can do that. It's pretty firm. And it pops right back in place. And that's that. That concludes our unboxing, case, and screen installing. And um, my slight critique, mostly affection for the new iPhone 11 Pro. Pro. Thanks for watching, guys. If, uh, if you thought this was cool, give it a like. If you thought it was really cool or really sucked, leave a comment, hit that dislike button. If uh, you guys want to see more of my channel, if you guys want to get my videos recommended to you a little more often, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to know every move I'm making on YouTube, then go ahead and hit that bell icon. It doesn't look like this, but that's just what I aimed at. This was fun. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really pumped. So you guys are probably going to be seeing a lot of cool footage, low light, panoramic, fisheye stuff with my brand new telephone. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a great night. I'll see you next time. Thanks.